Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Eye YouTube channel and it is time for the 10th and final challenge for my No Spend November challenge and giveaway series. I hope you'll stick around, see what the final challenge is, and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you're going to want to play along with the challenges and get entered to win, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Well, the time has come for me to share my final challenge for my No Spend November series. I have really enjoyed getting out some of those older supplies that I've been hanging on to and challenging myself and challenging you. I've loved seeing everything you've created. I've been going through slowly, checking up on those links, and it has been such a treat to see all of them. Don't forget that even though today is the last challenge, you have until November 30th to get those links submitted on each of the videos that you're going to play along with. Make sure to watch that introduction video where I tell you how you can play along and give you all of the details. It is linked in the description box below. But again, if you haven't heard of this and you want to know a little bit more about No Spend November, here's a little overview. During the month of November, I will be putting out challenges for myself and for my subscribers. You can play along on YouTube, on Instagram, or on the brand new Call Me Crafty Owl Facebook page. At the end of the month, I will tally up those entries and one lucky subscriber will win the now sold out Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine card kit. Don't forget for all of the official rules and details to check out the video linked in the description box below. Also in the description box are the hashtags that you'll need to use for today's challenge on YouTube and on Instagram. Don't forget on Instagram to go ahead and tag me at Call Me Crafty Owl. And if you're going to participate on Facebook, make sure in the description of your photo that you add your YouTube username. I hope that inspired you to play along. Challenge number 10 is so very thankful. I want you to create a new project with a thankful theme. I thought this would be a great way to finish up my challenge just so I can say how thankful I am for all of you who take the time to watch my videos, click that like button, leave me comments. It is so appreciated. I do read each and every one of your comments and it's such a treat to be able to interact with you. For my cards today, I will be using the January 2020 sheet load of cards to create 12 thank you cards. For my stamp set, I'll be using this thank you stamp right here, and this is from the Everyday Greeting stamp set. For my pattern papers, I pre-chose three pieces from the Spring Market Collection from Cartabella Papers. The sheet load itself calls for two pattern papers and then some coordinating cardstock. My plan is to use those three pieces from the collection, two all cut per the cutting guidelines here, and then the final one I'm going to use for CS3 and CS1. Hopefully this will work out. If you haven't already downloaded the January 2020 sheet load of cards, I will have the video with the instructions linked in the description box below. This would be a great sheet load to pump out any holiday cards you need for the upcoming season or if you're like me and would like to keep some extra thank yous on hand. Once I get into the process, I will start a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I started the cards off by cutting both of my pattern papers per the instruction on the printable. Now I won't really bore you with watching this because it is just the standard cutting for the 
sheet load of cards, but I do want to pause a minute and tell you how I cut the wood grain pattern paper. Like I mentioned earlier, this wood grain will take the place of CS3 and CS1. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut an eight and a half by 11 section out of the wood grain paper. The scraps that come off of this I am going to hang on to for my CS1 pieces, but once I have this piece cut down to 8.5 by 11, I then proceed to cut it into the 12 pieces that are 2 and a quarter inches wide by 2 and 3 quarters inches tall. Next, I brought in those scraps that were left over from the wood grain paper and I cut this into strips that I could use in place of CS1. I cut these into between three quarters and one inch wide strips and then I took the scallop border punch and punched all of these. I then cut them into four inch sections so they would go behind the pattern paper piece on the final card. Finally, I needed to cut down the CS2 pieces, but instead of using a full sheet of cardstock, I just got out some of my white cardstock scraps and I cut that until I had 12 pieces that were the correct size for the sentiment. I brought in my Gina K Designs Inc. ink swatch page and I chose a green that went with one of the shades in the pattern paper. This ended up being the fresh asparagus and then I started stamping my sentiments. Because I am going to make 12 of the same card, I decided to get out my Misty so I could just set that sentiment up once and then stamp it quickly 11 more times. I did hold off for a long time on purchasing a stamp positioner because let's face it, they are a little pricey, but I have to tell you that it is a purchase that I definitely don't regret, especially since I like to mass produce cards. Now all of the main pieces are ready, so I got 12 top fold card bases out of my stash and started assembly. The first thing I'm going to place down is the larger pattern paper on the top center of the card front, and then before I can add the smaller piece of pattern paper, I adhere the wood scallop piece to the top of it. Once those were in place, I matted my sentiment with the rectangle wood grain piece of paper. And you'll see here that mine's a little different from the sketch because my sentiment was wide, not tall. I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the three quarter inch width, and I added two pieces of that to the back of the sentiment. This way the card has a little dimension. I won't show me putting together all of the cards, but I do want to let you know that when I do these off camera, I do more of an assembly line. I put on all of piece A, I add the wood scallop border to all of piece B, then those go on the card. That way I only have to bring in the foam tape roll one time instead of bringing it in and out between cards. I am really liking the way these cards look as is, but I wanted to add a little sparkle. And I'm going to do that with my new favorite embellishment, the Elizabeth Craft Designs Glitter Gems. These are kind of a clear glittery dot, and then they have a gold frame around it. I also have these in silver, and let me tell you, these add such a nice sparkle to the cards, and they don't really add any dimension, and not to mention the price. I did take the time to count how many glitter dots were on this sheet, and there are over 800 for $2.20. Think about if you put enamel dots on 12 cards, you'd probably be in for four or five dollars for just those cards. This is the one purchase I am allowing myself on this no spend month. And here's a quick look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these 12 thank you cards quickly and easily using the January 2020 sheet load of cards. 
I can't wait to start seeing your thankful creations showing up in the comment section below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.